ಭ್ರಾಮನಂದಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಾಂದ್ವತೀರ್ಥ ಗಂಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತಾಕ್ಷಂ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸಾರ್ವದಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವತೀರ್ಥ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸಾಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ Hello, welcome. These teachings are from a work assigned to Adi Shankaracharya, which is called Aparokshanubhuti, or Self-Realization, or Direct Perception of the Self, of the Atman. And it is an introduction to Vedanta. It speaks about Raja Yoga with a Vedantic, Vedantic vision. So listen very carefully to these teachings, reflect upon them, then meditate upon these teachings so that they can bear fruit in your heart. May you all find freedom. Hello everyone, welcome. In this series of videos, I'm going to talk about a work which is assigned to Adi Shankaracharya. It is called Aparoksha Nubuti, It is, which means self-realization. It is an introduction to Vedanta, going also with the principles of Raja Yoga. Like a not really a transition, but it can be seen as a transition from one to the other, but not really. I will explain. Because, well, Raja Yoga is a non, it is a dualistic philosophy, Vedanta a non-dual philosophy. But we are talking about self-realization. It is the same, self-realization. There are no different kinds of self-realization. There's just one. Just one awakening, one enlightenment, one even God-realization is the same as self-realization. <clears throat> Those who realize God realize the self. It is the same because it is the same. So, if philosophies are right, they must be talking about the same thing, only with different terminologies, different ways of seeing and expressing the same ultimate realities and the path towards them. So there's just one God-realization, one self-realization, one enlightenment, one awakening, it is always the same. It is just one truth. So, every worthy philosophy, and that means the one that brings the ultimate result, it is talking about the same phenomenon, the same experience. So, they cannot be different. So, that means that The non-dual philosophy is not better than the dualistic one. They are talking about the same and they have just different language, a different approach. That's all there is. <clears throat> so, you have, and we will see this better, in Vedanta you have the Atman, which is individual soul. You have Jiva Atman, which is that individual soul which, is, which sees itself incarnated. 
you have Purusa, which is the cosmic soul, and you have Brahman, which is the absolute. Well, if we look at Raja Yoga, for example, we see that this cosmics, this Purusa and Ishvar are the same. Ishvar, God, is the same as that Purusha. And as we will see also, Purusha is Brahman. There's no difference between them. There's no difference between Brahman, no difference between Purusha, no difference between Atman, and no difference between Jivatman. So all are the same, just terminologies. And all are Brahman, because in the non-dualistic vision, only Brahman exists. But Brahman is no different from these others. So the cosmic soul and God, they are the same. And God is Brahman also. <clears throat> there may be a slight difference in philosophical terms. But those who realize God and those who realize Brahman, they realize the same thing. Terminologies may change, but it is the same. So it's just a matter of understanding the philosophy. That's all. Because, okay, so in Vedanta there is this uh, the vision of the individual self as an illusion. Well, if you look at dualistic uh, philosophy of Raja Yoga, it is the same. The difference is in the seeker's understanding. And as he sees God as a companion, as a uh, a wish-fulfilling entity, as a blessing entity, as someone who is there to support them on this path. This does not lead to liberation. But when you look at God as the ultimate reality, the only thing that really exists, and you seek God to merge with it, with God, then it is the same. Because when you look at God as the, the only existing entity, it is the same as looking at Brahman as the only existing thing. So when you look at God and your quest for God realization in a sense of merging with God, of dissolving into God, that leads to oneness. But if you use God as an entity that has something to give to this individual identity, then this maintains duality. But God is the destiny of that which is not negated in Raja Yoga, that individual consciousness. It is the droplet of water that is going to be absorbed back into the ocean, God, and it becomes one with the ocean. And when you look at the ocean, you say the ocean. You don't say the droplets. There's only the ocean. And that ocean is God. And that ocean is Purusa. And ultimately that ocean is Brahman. So, either you go through a, a non-dual approach or a dualistic approach, everything ends in oneness, or else it hasn't ended yet. So they are all talking about the same thing. This is very important to understand because there's a lot of conflicts about different kinds of philosophies. And sometimes you need to, to, 
to move to a different philosophy according to your own personal needs, according to your own illusion. It's not about the philosophy because, well, if it is a newly created philosophy, that's something else. We have to see if it goes through the test of time. But a philosophy like Raja Yoga, for example, <laughs> it has gone through the test of time. It has produced a lot and a lot of free beings, whatever that means, enlightened souls. So, it is a real philosophy. And <clears throat> maybe you need to change philosophy sometime, like I said, according to your own illusion. But you can go to the end of that philosophy and you will reach the same goal. So the spiritual path is not about choosing the best philosophy, because that's not a spiritual path, that is a mental path. It is about following the guidance that comes, following the, the life of the spiritual process. And that is what directs you to what is better next. So, there are many things as for affirming a reality to be able to transcend it or to, me, to negate that reality, to say it, it's not real, to be able to overcome it. But it's still the same. It is still the same. The one who is saying, okay, so I'm in a jail and I need to find my liberation. And the one who is saying, there is no jail, there is no liberation. He is doing that to reach liberation as the previous one. They are both in the same delusion. And they are doing the same thing to reach the same end. So no need fighting about which is the best philosophy, but embrace that which guidance points you to as the best thing for that moment. All the lines eventually lead to that straight line. And that straight line leads you to oneness. Either from a dualistic perspective or a non-dual perspective, it is the same. So, Aparoksha Nubuti, self-realization. So, in the first sloka it begins. I bow down to him, to Sri Hari, the destroyer of ignorance, the supreme bliss, the first teacher, Ishvara, the, the all-pervading one, and the cause of all lokas, the universe. So, you will see this in the scriptures of Vedanta. Always this opening, this, this prayer, this prayer to God, which is incredible because it is a non-dualistic. So why is there a prayer to God, to seeking the blessings of God? Because to be able to move to Vedanta, your heart must be filled with divine love, with devotion for the Guru, for the Deity. In this case, Deity may bring confusion for God. God has that infinite being. And if we look at this first sloka, it says the all-pervading one. And this is very interesting. Ishvara, first teacher, 
Supreme Bliss. Supreme Bliss. This is uh, the same description for Brahman. All-pervading one, Brahman. The cause of all lokas, the cause, the substractum, Brahman. So, Ishvara, Brahman are the same. And we could talk a little bit more about this, but it's too soon for that. About this love which is involved. And... Too soon. Okay. So, second sloka. Here is expounded expounded aparokshanubhuti or the means to attain aparokshanubhuti which is self-realization for the acquisition of final liberation only the pure in heart should constantly and with all effort meditate upon the truth hearing taught so this is very important only the pure in heart should constantly and with all effort and with all effort meditate upon the truth here and taught which is very different from what is being expounded about Advaita Vedanta no effort everyone can practice it but in reality that is not the case and only the pure in heart that has many meanings, of course. One of them is the heart full of divine love. And the one with a, a heart full of divine love. It's very difficult to harbor uh, human impurities. Because as long as there are these impurities, it is not filled with divine love. They cannot fit in the same place. Because if it's not filled with divine love, if it's not filled with reverence, it will lead you astray. It will become just a mental path, a delusional path, and not a real path, not a living path. So only the pure in heart should constantly, at all times, constantly, this is very important because spiritual practice cannot be like this. It has to be constant. It is 24-7, not just something that you visit at the moment of the day and then you distract with the rest. It has to be constant. And with all effort, because effort will have to be involved until it becomes effortless until it becomes natural and that happens when everything is purified when your heart is filled with divine love when the negative habit patterns the negative thought patterns have been eliminated transformed So this aparokshanuputi, meaning self-realization or direct perception of the Atman. And this exposition is about exposing the method, the steps towards that aparokshanuputi. The four preliminary qualifications, the means to attainment of knowledge. Again, everyone, it's for everyone nowadays, but in the old days, from the scriptural teachings, the four preliminary qualifications. 
and without these qualifications, it doesn't go. The means to attainment of knowledge, such as vairagya, dispassion, and the like, are acquired by men propitiating Hari, the Lord, through austerities and the performance of duties pertaining to their social order and stage of life. So, in this vision, it's kind of... God is like the nanny that is taking care of the children. And when the children reveal their maturity, it takes them to the next level, more or less. So all these qualities, all these qualifications are attained by propitiating Shihari, God. Because it is God that enables, enables you to move forth, further to oneness. So those who deny God, they deny themselves. Not that it isn't possible for self-realization by denying God. Not that. But at the same time, yes. But it's complicated to explain because a lot of variables. But it's like I have the difficulties I have big challenges and I have there something to help me transcend these difficulties and I just ignore it. Well, it's not impossible, of course, but it's by far much more difficult and dry. And again, by propitiating Hari the Lord, but even before that, even before that, propitiating also Divine Mother. This is another aspect. You cannot propitiate Shihari without propitiating the Divine Mother. But that's something that we'll not go into. For now, that's it. We'll stop here, resume in the next video. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti